Hello and welcome back to yet another canal adventure. We're ready to get underway. And as you can see, it's just got busy. Yet another slightly different video today. We've used two cameras. The main picture is footage from our usual camera, which today is fitted in the well deck on the right hand window of the cratch board at the very front of the boat. The smaller picture in the bottom left of your screen is from a secondary camera that was purchased to film our journeys. This is the first time that we have used the secondary camera and to be honest with you, we're disappointed by the picture quality. That's been spelt as K-W-A-L-I-T-Y. If it looks heavily filtered to you, I can confirm that it is. I've had to apply a few filters in the video editing software we're using to the footage to get it to look like it's currently looking. And I think it now looks like it's been recorded using a VHS video tape camera. I'll fade it away in a while and we'll go back to it nearer the end of this vlog. Today, the 9th of June 2019, we are leaving the Grafton Regis area and we're heading on down to Yardley Gobion on the Grand Union Canal. We're aiming to moor up just opposite Yardley Wharf. We have an appointment at Baxter's Boatyard and have booked ourselves into Kingfisher Marina for the month of July. We've booked into a marina because of a number of things, these being work commitments, our volunteering, we're off to a scout camp for a weekend, and we have a few family events coming up as well. Now we knew that we would need to be away from the boat for more than the allowed 14 days mooring, and thought it best to use a marina than face the wrath of the CRT. We haven't done a great deal of editing on this vlog, so you're going to see the majority of our journey from Grafton Regis down to Yardley Gobion. The middle section has been sped up slightly to reduce the length of the vlog. I would hope that you have already made yourself a nice drink and grab some biscuits. I've done a little bit of research about the village that we know today as Grafton Regis. Now back in the mists of time it was known as Grafton Woodville, but when Elizabeth Woodville married Edward IV, the village and the land surrounding it passed into the control of the Crown Estate, and that is why we now know the village as Grafton Regis. You'll remember we mentioned about the War of the Roses and the decisive Battle of Bosworth when we were on the Ashby Canal way back in vlog number 9. That was where King Richard III was defeated and killed, which marked the start of the reigns of the Tudor Kings and Queens of England. Well, Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville's children were the infamous two princes who Richard III had incarcerated in the Tower of London, and he allegedly had them killed. As they say, power corrupts. Now the link to the Tudors. Henry VIII's favourite hunting lodge was located... Where do you think that was? Yes, that's right. It was here at Grafton Regis, in a 1,000 acre park and woodland. It was here at the hunting lodge in Grafton Regis, that Cardinal Wolsey informed the king that he could not have his first divorce. And we all know what happened after that. Grafton Regis remained part of the Crown Estates up until 1644, when it was sold. There's a church up on the hill that can be seen from the canal and fellow vloggers Sam and Helen of the YouTube channel Bine and Narrowboat did a vlog about the church and about the history of Grafton Regis as well. We'll put a link up there on the right if we can. In 
It's quite difficult to imagine what this area would have been like when it was park and woodland only a few hundred years ago. It just goes to show how much of the country has changed and been deforested for over centuries. We should remember that both World War I and World War II saw the land area covered by forest dwindle here in the UK to just 5% of our total land mass. However, since then, this has improved slightly to just under 13%. That would be roughly 12 million square miles of forest in the UK today. And this is, of course, thanks to the efforts of the Forestry Commission and the Woodland Trust. Compared to our European neighbours, the UK's forest land mass is a third of the size. Those other European countries have at least 38% of their total land mass designated as forests. Time for a short musical interlude now, but come back afterwards to hear about the history of Yardley Wharf. Time for a little bit of a moan here. Lots of overhanging trees along this stretch. At times it feels like the canal actually narrows to just a single narrowboat's width. I wouldn't have wanted to do this in a wide beam. Just before the bridge, you'll notice that there is something floating in the middle of the canal. It looks like some reeds have broken free from the edge of the canal, probably freed by the passage of a boat, and they are now bobbing along in the centre on their own little adventure. The bow of our boat, the pointy bit, pushes them off to one side and they pass along the side of the boat without incident. Just after the bridge, it's farmers' fields on both sides of the canal with very few trees, or nothing substantial anyway and you get to see what the full width of the canal should be. It's huge! It's a super highway cutting its way through the countryside. You can just imagine how busy this canal was back when it was the main archery into London from the coal fields and the industries in Birmingham and beyond. As we said earlier, we're heading towards Yardley Wharf, which was first documented as being constructed in 1801. The land it was built on was owned by the Duke of Grafton, and the wharf was listed as his property. Records also show that a licence to sell ale had been granted to a pub at the wharf, 
which sadly is no longer there. We put a link in the description below to the local history website which lists the names of the landlords and other stories around the wharf and surrounding lands. It's quite interesting the number of prosecutions and allegations of wrongdoing that are attributed to people associated to Yardley Wharf. On the website there is also a story about a potash carrying steam tugboat that was making a delivery at the wharf just before Christmas in 1875. Having to wait for some time, the captain, an old man, left a much younger boy in charge of the boiler on the tug with fatal consequences. Two men died, others were rescued by locals. The coroner's verdict about the incident noted, amongst other recommendations, that the old captain should be pensioned off. We are heading to Yardley Wharf to make an appointment we have at Baxter's Boatyard. If you watched our vlog of us going through the locks of the Stoke Bruin flight, you'll know that we really, really need to get the hull of the boat blacked. This is the process of applying a couple of coats of bitumen paint to the hull to help prevent rusting. We're also going to need to have our anodes replaced. As avid followers of narrowboat vlogs, you'll be fully aware that an anode is an ingot of sacrificial metal attached to the underwater hull of a canal dwelling boat, which corrodes due to electrolysis more readily than the hull or propeller. We currently have four anodes attached to the hull of the boat, two either side, fore and aft. After our visit to Baxter's, we will have six with the addition of two slimline anodes at midships. We had wanted to do the blacking work ourselves. We had seen other vloggers doing this over the years and it's definitely something that we could do. However, due to the previously mentioned work and other commitments that we both had, it wouldn't have been possible for us to do this during 2019. When we purchased the boat in August 2018, we knew that it needed this work doing to it, and we didn't want to delay it for another year. That left us with just one option, and so we paid for the professionals to do the job for us. Of course, there'll be more about this in a future vlog. The front camera stops recording, so the narrowboat journey will continue in the smaller video window on the bottom left. Welcome back to Canal Walks with Paul. He's not Julia Bradbury. We've taken to walking quite a distance back along the towpaths as we retrieved the car from where it was left. Where is it? 
now. I'll just take the hand out of the way. The church I'm trying to point out is St James the Great at Hanslope. We'll leave a link in the description below. He points out the tower and runs off. That's nice, isn't it? We're going to stand and talk to the sheep for a bit. Thank you for watching. See you next time.